My name is Ben, and I sing for a band called Lord Huron. I uh, recorded the first couple EPs on my own, and uh, started getting some press, and people were writing about it and asking us to do shows. So uh, I didn't really know many musicians in LA, so I called my old buddies who kind of spread across the country, guys I grew up with, and they they came out, and uh, we kind of been touring ever since. You know, it's weird. It's not really much of a conscious choice when I start writing about things. Um, I guess on the road I have a lot of time to think and reflect and, um, you know, you end up spending a lot of time in your head, I think, on the road. And uh, I guess Strange Trails is kind of about not being afraid to confront, confront sort of the, the dark side of life. And um, I think it's healthy every now and then to kind of stare into that void and just kind of be honest with your life. It was a nice experience recording the second album. We kind of we were able to kind of hole up and take our time a little more, believe it or not. I mean, you, like you said, you kind of have your whole life to make your first album, but in a lot of ways, just because of budget constraints and being a new artist, you know, you're, you're in a studio and you have, you have to finish by a deadline, you know, every hour is money spent. Um, so for the second album, we knew we wanted to do a little differently. Um, so we found a place that we could just rent on our own and be in there whenever we wanted for however long we wanted. and. Uh, try not to feel the pressure of, of time as much, you know? So it gave us a chance to experiment and and more importantly, just to kind of live in the songs for a while and kind of figure out what they were about and, and uh, you know, know them as intimately as we could. Yeah, writing Fool for Love, um, I guess it was kind of inspired by the classic country story songs of the golden age of country. Um, I was always really attracted to those tragic tales of, of love um, and loss and um, so I wanted to write something that kind of recalled those, um, you know, with our own twist on it. And um, a lot of the songs on Strange Trails are very clearly narrative, you know, with a pretty distinct storyline. Um, and it was interesting to write that way, a little more narratively and concretely. Um, and that one in particular, you know, songwriting is such a economical art form you only have you know three or four minutes to tell a story and evoke a feeling um, so with that song we, we were experimenting a lot with kind of musical musical shorthand um, kind of borrowing from f sounds of the past and playing with how you know just using a specific beat or a specific tone can kind of evoke all this uh, these associations you know subconsciously in people um, so you, know, you can drop a a Bo Diddley beat and a baritone guitar, and it, suddenly you're transported to another another time. Uh, so we were we were looking for a place where we could record and rehearse, and uh, really striking out in LA. I mean, real estate's pretty hard to come by there. Um, so kind of in the last ditch, we answered this ad in the classifieds, and um, and the place was amazing. I mean, it's it was in it's, it was in disrepair to say the least, but. Uh, you know, it was all acoustically treated and um, just a beautiful space, so we stripped it out and kind of rebuilt it ourselves. And, you know, we're not too big of gearheads or anything like that, so we were able to kind of keep it pretty lean and simple in terms of what kind of equipment we have in there. Um, but yeah, it just kind of became our clubhouse, and we pretty much lived there for six months. Just because we had the luxury to be there at all hours and um, um, for as long as we wanted, you know, kind of like I was saying before, it really let us immerse ourselves in the songs and you know hanging things on the wall and just kind of really putting ourselves in the mindset of the album and uh, letting everything evolve naturally. Taking, taking what we make in the studio and bringing it to the live setting uh, has kind of been our greatest challenge since the beginning uh, because it started as such a studio project but um, I'm lucky in that I've got a killer band. Um, some of my best friends from childhood and um, they're all much more competent uh, musicians than I am. And so they've really uh, helped me figure out ways to translate this pretty rich sound uh, into a live setting with just five people. Um, and you know, we're not slaves to making it exactly like the record either. We're really kind of interested in the live show being uh, its own its own thing and its own experience. So, so while we try to be true to the songs, what's at the core of the songs, um, we're also willing to let the live show be its own, its own thing. It does. Uh, we find that when we're working on a song, um, I think because we I have such a long-standing relationship with the guys in the band, they kind of understand the way 
uh, the way my mind works and I understand the way theirs, and a lot of time we'll find ourselves talking about music uh, visually, just because I think a lot of us think that way. Um, so, you know, when we're trying to get a sound, we'll talk about ice breaking or elephant stomping or, you know, sometimes it helps to kind of visualize a sound. Uh, music is so abstract that sometimes you have to put something concrete to it to talk about it. Well, you know, we're pretty tied up touring these days. Uh, that's taking up most of our time, but I tend to um, I tend to write and gather little snippets while I'm on the road. So we're going to take a couple months off early next year, and I'm going to get back in the studio and start writing some, some new stuff. Hi, I'm Ben from Lord Huron. This is Grammy Pro.